Hello everybody and welcome back to Hoggy Approved. So today I'm going to be breaking away from my normal previous way of doing videos. I'm not going to be looking at an individual film. This is more going to be an extension to my last video on Revenge of the Sith. And I'm going to be relating it to the real world events. And in particular as a British citizen I'm going to be looking at it in the perspective of the EU referendum and the Brexit result. I must say at this point that this is absolutely not me trying to convince anyone of any political ideals. It's merely speculative and I'm merely putting ideas across about the result and as I said comparing it to Star Wars. The other thing is that while I did vote I felt like I could have voted either way so please don't try and assume which way I voted and please don't judge me either way either. The referendum happened, what, two or three months ago now? But the effects of it will have a very long-lasting effect to come, so it's still very relevant. And Britain were part of the EU for 43 years. During that time, most of us probably wouldn't have considered voting out, because it was a very nice and stable political system. And considering what happened in the first half of the 20th century, I think we're all happy to see a nice unity between all these countries, because we're at peace. But then suddenly we're all inundated with these arguments and politicians telling us that we should vote in or out suddenly and most of us didn't really understand why to be honest most of the public i did make an effort to do the research into a lot of these views because i wanted to make sure i knew what i was voting for and it seemed to me that so many of these arguments were looking at for instance financial benefits whether it was trying to make britain great again by leaving which i personally don't agree with as an idea anyway or looking at the financial benefits of remaining in the EU. But in general, both, both arguments were more very idealistic, and they were looking at both of their reasons as if everything with the vote in or out worked perfectly. And that was the best possible scenario, really, while looking at the other side in the worst possible light. So it seemed like the issue that was being debated the most was the immigration and of course this was an excuse for people to draw the race card. On one hand you had the people wanting to vote remain saying that we should just um, allow everyone to come into our country regardless of who they are because it's all equality and all it's all good and it's fair. But of course you've got to consider the fact that Allowing so many people into our country is putting such a strain on our resources, our finances, and overpopulation is never a good thing. While at the complete opposite extreme, you had the people wanting to vote leave, saying that we should just completely close our, door, our borders, and even kick out the immigrants who'd already come into our country. And in both cases, this is stupid, because immigrants are very good for our economy, although it's not necessarily a good idea to have too many. Not that I necessarily want to be there denying them. But of course, what this led to seemed to be just a big debate between right-wing and left-wing policy, and it really annoyed me, and it seemed like so many of the people advocating these sides were just manipulating everyone and trying to gain followers rather than actually just laying down the truth for people to make their own decisions. It shouldn't be a surprise that our politicians aren't being straight to us, especially since that when the Leave campaigners got their way, they suddenly revealed that they didn't really have a solid plan going forward. But I think a lot of people have missed the idea of why we're actually voting to leave in the first place and maybe this is something I should have said before we actually voted but I think really we were voting because it was put into question whether the EU was really doing its job anymore as a credible democratic form of um, peacekeeping unity I should say. It's not a secret that the Eurozone has come up with a lot of problems, especially when a few European countries have gone bankrupt 
And ever since the uh, recession in 2008, the Eurozone has really crashed. I mean, not a lot of world economies have as well, but the Eurozone has really felt it. It's also not a secret that there are a number of countries looking to leave the EU, and Britain was only a, a starter, so we're almost paving the way for others. And when one of the leading countries looking to leave is France, who is one of the two biggest economic powers in Europe, that really doesn't look good for the future of the EU. And a big reason they wanted to leave was because they saw it as not really a form of democratic leadership anymore, because a lot of countries don't necessarily have a say in the rules of the EU. It's left to political leaders. I mean, Britain have leaders working with the EU, but we, we, the general public, don't really have a say in what they do. In fact, in general, we don't feel like we're actually represented properly. We, we care a lot more about our own government than those we send to the EU. So if there's a bit of a shadow dictatorship going on there, then is it really a good thing to perpetuate it on just because of the idealisms it was built on. So in some ways you could argue the debate was really, well, at the extremes, a bit of a debate between some naive idealism and some selfish nationalism on the other side, both of which are poor ideas and both of which promote pretty bad things. And Honestly, it doesn't surprise me that a lot, of, a lot of young people wanted to vote to remain because in many respects, young people are by nature more idealistic because they haven't lived as long and because they haven't seen or understood the politics of most of the last 43 years. So they don't even know the changes that have been with the EU. However, a lot of older people aren't necessarily voting with the right uh, frame of mind. And uh, it's, it's just, it's all just become a mess, really. But honestly, if the Eurozone crashes, I'm not sure that it would happen any different if we stayed or we left, because the EU might just crumble down anyway, and we might just be making it happen a bit sooner, which... I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest. Maybe that's a bit of a pessimistic view because they might recover, but that doesn't mean it will be a better system. In fact, what amuses me is that if one of our biggest reasons for leaving was because of immigration, if Britain genuinely did become a stronger power because of our uh, nationalism and our standing apart from the rest of Europe, and then... If um, the Eurozone did crash and the EU fell apart, Britain would therefore be left as the strongest power in Europe, and therefore we would probably be left with even more immigrants than we would have been anyway. So that certainly wouldn't have solved the problem. It would have only been a short-term stopping immigrants coming in because then we'd just been inundated with them anyway. So how does this relate to Star Wars, you ask? Well, we can look at the prequel trilogy as being about a system of democratic unity and about how it is corrupt and how it's failing in its duty to uphold the ideals it was built on and how it's no longer helping out the people it's tasked to serve. And if you imagine this to the EU, then it becomes a lot clearer because we as a real world might well face the collapse of the EU and if that happens then we will be facing a type of Revenge of the Sith where the system falls and you get an era of darkness after it although we would certainly hope that there won't be that much war or mass dictatorship to come after it and I certainly don't think Nigel Farage or Boris Johnson can fill the shoes of Palpatine. People have complained a lot on social media about exiting the EU, as they would, and they've said things like, oh, they've taken away our future, they ruined our future. 
And I don't think people have the right to say this because the future hasn't happened yet. And just because see, things might look bleak doesn't mean that the future is going to be ruined. After all, we control our own future, not the events of the past. I mean, all generations have to go through great trials. So it's not right for us to just assume that ours is any different from any other generations, really. I mean, if you go back to the first half of the 20th century, they went through two world wars, the Wall Street crash, and what's come out of that was a lot of good things which we take for granted in the modern world, like the um, ability to actually create a system like the EU in the first place and actually have that peace between nations. Um, what's interesting though is of course the recession that came in 2008 was um, a big a big reason for it was because too many people were buying things on credit and banks were giving out too much money that they didn't have which is exactly the same reason the Wall Street crash happened. So really, it's exactly the same problem coming back on itself, which is human greed. And maybe if all these problems are going to happen, maybe it's a kick up the backside for humanity to put themselves back in gear and then sort this problem out so that they can create something better for the future rather than complaining about what's going to happen for our generation before we've even got to it yet. So just as the Republic in Star Wars may have needed to be brought down because it was too corrupt, so might the EU for us to create something better on top of it, even if there are dark times to come. And in Star Wars, the Rebellion fought against those dark times in the form of the Empire, showing how the original trilogy really is about the redemption of the galaxy, and how the fallout of the end of the Republic really needs time to settle in for people to actually then take back the power and make something better from it. And the same can really be said for the story of the 20th century as a whole, because the first half it was some ideals and you had all this war and this complete change of society, such that after that came a lot of good things and us seeing how we can create a better society for our people. So instead of really complaining and making such a big fuss about how we think the future would be, sometimes I think we just need to knuckle under and take the situation that's given to us and make it better rather than just trying to push through what we want. EU or no EU, we still have a lot of good future out there. And that's certainly not something just for British people, it's for the whole world. So, be like the rebellion, fight against the dark times, and then we can all have a better future. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Well, that was an interesting video. I didn't necessarily know why I was going to take this, but, um... Yeah, I had fun anyway, so I think that's probably a good place to leave it. Um, well, um, if you liked this video, then please like, share, and subscribe, and comment, why not? Um, and I suppose, thanks for watching. Um, by the way, I'm probably not going to be doing The Force Awakens straight after this. I do want to talk about it, but... I've done quite a lot of Star Wars recently, so I want to move on to something else, so we'll see what that is. So, um, thanks for watching, and see you later!